One of the most famous and intriguing monuments in the world is Stonehenge. To say it's impressive is an understatement. The largest of the stones is estimated to weigh 40 tons and measures 24 feet high. But what is it? A religious site or something else? Stonehenge definitely qualifies as ancient. According to history, it was first started as much as 5,000 years ago and wasn't completed until around 1600 BC. In other words, construction at Stonehenge went on for a whopping 1,400 years or so. As part of this construction, a lot of labor-intensive work was carried out, including digging a large ditch, cutting and carrying massive stones from miles away, and arranging these stones in place. With the rocks weighing between 4 and 40 tons and laborers working without the benefits of modern machinery, this transport was clearly no easy feat, and precisely how it was done remains a topic of speculation. Over the years, many different archaeologists have surveyed the site. According to English Heritage, these included John Aubrey in 1666. Aubrey was an antiquarian, and after exploring Stonehenge, he came to believe that the monument was a religious site which had been created by the Druids. More than simply a nature-based religious group, Britannica says the Druids were also ancient scholars, serving as judges and teachers. They were prominent in England from around the 3rd century BC until the Romans invaded. And honestly, this Druidic connection makes sense, on the surface. This theory would later be disproved when the stones were dated to many thousands of years before the Druids arrived on the scene, and historians were all the way back to square one. One of man's most curious creations. Since modern people started to study Stonehenge, they've tried to work out just why it was built. Clearly, it was pretty important. And it's kind of incredible that it was worth hundreds of years of backbreaking labor, and today, history says we have no idea why those generations of builders did it. Though scientists have been able to use scientific techniques like carbon dating to identify details about when the monument was built, the purpose of the monument remains a mystery. National Geographic says that some of the earliest theories about Stonehenge include the myth that it was built by the wizard Merlin. According to this theory, the stones were moved to England from Ireland at the command of King Arthur's uncle, King Ambrosium Aurelianus. Why? To create a memorial to honor slain warriors. Honestly, it'd make a great movie. Even stranger theories have been touted in modern times, including speculation by some who believe the monument was built by aliens. According to the New York Times, believers say that it was created to be a landing pad for spacecraft. Other interpretations have come straight from the mouths of educated experts, including a theory from a gynecologist who says Stonehenge is meant to represent Mother Earth's birth canal. Would we watch that movie? Still, for every strange theory, there is a scientifically backed alternative. For instance, one of the popular theories about Stonehenge is that it was once a cemetery. That's according to The New Scientist and The New York Times. This theory is supported by scientific evidence, which suggests that bodies were buried in the area around Stonehenge about 5,000 years ago. Well over 200 bodies are thought to have been buried at the site, but still, that's a lot of work for a relatively small number of people. Other experts think that Stonehenge was meant to be a place for the dead in a broader sense. This theory relies on the closeness of a nearby monument, Woodhenge, which dates back to around 4,500 years ago. Woodhenge had a similar form to Stonehenge, and the theory says that where Stonehenge was used in ceremonies to represent the dead, Woodhenge may have been used to represent the living, according to NPR. The sites could have been important features of the summer and winter solstice ceremonies. But one set of theories has often stood above the crowd. These popular and seemingly intuitive theories suggest that Stonehenge may have been a massive calendar. Stonehenge has several features that have made experts wonder if it was some sort of astronomical calendar, including orientation of stones with the summer and winter solstices. Now, new evidence from a research study out of Bournemouth University in the UK gives more weight to the theory. So, you know henges? Well, this is a stone one. In the study, features of Stonehenge are explained with relation to the solar calendar, including analysis of how the arrangement of the stones may have been designed to line up with the longest and shortest days of the year. Additionally, the study's authors suggest that the original formation of Stonehenge, which once held 30 massive stones, was designed to reflect the number of days in a month. This would have created a calendar of 360 days split into 12 separate months. Additional features of Stonehenge were also identified in the study as potentially related to leap years. If Stonehenge truly was a solar calendar, it would be far from the only one of its kind. Similar solar calendars can be found all over the globe from around the same time period, including in Egypt. Still, it would be a novel example within the United Kingdom. 
However, the study hasn't gone unchallenged. Some experts have said that the findings remain largely speculative and point out logical flaws in the argument. NBC News reports that some experts have noted that the building of such a time and labor intensive clock makes little sense. Others have identified holes in the evidence behind the study, including the lack of any stones indicating the separation of the 12 months, supposedly a key feature of the Stonehenge calendar. As Stonehenge is constantly being investigated, other studies in recent years have also popped up, providing new evidence and information about the site. One recent analysis revealed that the land Stonehenge is built on was actually an open plain when the site was first created, rather than a forested region, as expressed as experts originally believed. These plains would have been traversed by hunter-gatherers for millennia before Stonehenge was built. Though the complete implications of this new information aren't immediately clear, the continual development of new evidence over time will likely spawn newer and more defined theories about Stonehenge's origins. Who knows? Eventually, someone may discover evidence that determines, once and for all, why exactly Stonehenge was built.